Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a cheesesteak steak fries. We use a Denver steak, which made it a little twist, and I think it came out fantastic. If you guys want to see this, here we go. Cheese steak fries. We like to start off with one of the newer cooks on the griddle with a cheesesteak inspired recipe. I have to give credit where credit's due. This is my wife's idea. And you know what happens when you're married. I'm right, she's wrong. And so that's what we're gonna to do today, her recipe. All right, this is the idea. Really quick, I thought about making like my homemade potatoes and all that stuff, but we're gonna keep it quick today so I got some steak fries. I did that because I thought the steak fries have a little bit more width on them. They're a little bit more shallower. I think it's a great fry to put on the griddle. If you're gonna put a frozen fry on the griddle, you understand the surface area. But this right here is a Denver steak. Now. The ribeyes at the grocery store today did not have near the marbling in those. And we all know that ribeye reigns supreme when it comes to cheesesteak. One thing to mention, ribeyes were $17.98 a pound. This was $8.98 a pound. Cost saving measure as well. You're putting on a fry, you're already messed up with your diet. So why <laughs> not just incorporate a different cut of meat? So the idea today, we're gonna use this beautiful, I mean, absolutely beautiful marbled Denver steak. Okay, we're gonna cut against the grain, sear it off, cut against the grain, have some slices. We have some bell pepper. She said, why don't you get the uh, green kind? I said, because the green kind is more expensive than the yellow, orange, and red. So we went back and forth over 20 cents. <laughs> so I said, to heck with it. I'll get the green and then I got the one that had all the color in it just to aggravate her. I got a jalapeno because I think anytime <laughs> on fries it's gonna work. So, uh, some onion, American cheese, some sharp cheddar cheese and some provolone. Throw a little, maybe some W sauce as a bonder. Half and half for that cheese sauce. So the idea, let's put the fries on the griddle. Let's sear up that steak. Let's do some vegetables and make a cheese steak fry. You guys good? Just wanted to show this off really quick. A lot of times you'll end up seeing it like this or like this. I honestly don't swear by these. I really don't know if you notice it's a little bit different. Since I do not have my hood attached, I kind of like the idea of keeping just a little bit of protection on, uh, especially with the pollen and just the sheer amount of dirt that comes through the, the porch when a storm happens. So I'll keep it on here. I'm not sold one way or the other. I'm just showing they have the option. I did notice that it doesn't cover the grease trap, which I thought was interesting, or the grease trough. So there we go. Camp Chef silicone mat. Alrighty, first cook on the gridiron. So let's see what happens. All right, so we're gonna use the stainless steel pot because this is gonna be our cheese sauce pot. So uh, let's zone cook. So let's see, the left side is gonna be on like a medium heat, medium high. And then the right side is gonna come up to a medium heat for now, just so it starts heating up. Now remember, my controls are gonna be a lot different than yours. If you don't have a camp chef, uh, you have a Blackstone or a Traeger, Weber, whatever. You know, just because I use my dials does not necessarily mean you use your dials. It's all about temperature. This runs a little bit lower, so we need a little bit more heat. Really quickly, a little W sauce for a binder. And these things are super thin, so it won't take long on the griddle. I'm going to do half shake, salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. Flip them over, W sauce. And then we're gonna actually hit it with some smash that. Why? Because it's got a little grill seasoning in there, a little grill flavor, a little smoke. Just ampling up those flavors. Oh, kind of like the best of both worlds. Look at there. As our pan's warming up, I'm just gonna add some half and half. You can use heavy cream. We've actually done a cheese sauce from scratch before with like three simple ingredients. We're gonna mirror that today, but just use a little half and half. So there's right there is a half a cup. We might have to adjust because on my recipe, I use heavy cream. We didn't have any, so I used half and half, but I think it's gonna work out fine. All righty, just put a little oil down. Not all the time do you want your griddle level or run it towards a grease trap. Sometimes you like your grease to run uphill or downhill 
and get stuck in a corner so that way you can pull it back and start deep frying. See how it's going back that way? I'm gonna use that to my advantage. So it's pretty level. Get it all heated up. We got our half and half warmed up some cheese slices. Probably good, uh, that's a lot of fries. So probably three slices of American cheese. Get a little creaminess, a little color. Start off with half a block of cheese with that sharp cheddar. I'm just gonna grate that right inside of it. You see what I'm saying, how this type of french fry kind of benefits griddle cooking? A little bit shallower, it's a rec It's like a flatter. So a couple tosses, a couple flips, and you should be pretty, pretty good. You know, they talk about how you're supposed to season your fries as soon as they come out of the grease because they're still a little wet from the grease. Same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and season them now with a little shake that. Love that stuff on french fries. I'm still rocking the two zone system. So over here is a medium high, over here is a medium. Just to give you an idea, I'm gonna sear it right here with these steaks because they need to cool. So you're looking at roughly 430. Remember, this is gonna happen extremely fast. I'm just using that leftover oil from the fries. We're gonna give it a flip. We're looking to cook this probably like a medium rare to rare. I don't wanna overcook this at all. You notice there's not much color. It wasn't on the griddle long enough to get a color. Uh, we'll be able to pull that, let it rest. We'll be able to cook the vegetables, slice it super thin against the grain, put everything back on here, melt the cheese, and build our fries. The griddle's working its way down in temp. I actually just cut off these two burners. Plenty of residual heat, jalapeno, onion, and bell pepper. black pepper, a little salt. See our grains are running this way. So to manage the pieces, I'm actually gonna go this way. See, still a little rare. And then right there across the grain, cut these just like you would when it's raw. We're just trying to amp up the flavor a little bit before we start slicing. Now I know you were hesitant about getting this cut of meat because ribeye reigns supreme when it comes to cheesesteaks. Yep, I'm anxious to try it. But I'm not gonna stick my fingers on the cutting board while you're cutting, but. Well, I can tell just when you're finger this meat. <laughs> so it's just super important. Look, we're not worried about perfect pieces. We're just worried about getting it thin. You gotta think about, like uh, I talk about all the time, matching the hatch, keeping it uh, small enough to where your fries can pick mm. it up. Mm. So do you think we made a mistake by buying it or do you think? No, it, I think it's good. Yeah, a lot of fat. Let me try that in piece. Obviously, we're not scared to eat rare meat. <laughs> no. I would, I would try that just as a steak. That is good. Both of those steaks were what seven dollars and fifty cents together. For yeah. Mmm. You hear that sound? That's just working your zones, right? So this is taking the heat off of it. Plus, this is probably a cooler side of their griddle. And if I move the vegetables over, it's still off.
warm that cheese sauce up just a little bit. You see it thickened up on us. Just a little bit of salt. Trying to keep as much moisture in the steak as possible to keep it super, super, super tender. Not trying to lose any of the moisture. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take a little bit away for garnish. I know what you're thinking. I got you. Where's the provolone coming? I got you. Somehow that's missing a piece. <laughs> or a bite. Mm. Last but not least, you can do sliced jalapenos. We have a little of these uh, jarred banana peppers. I like them. We've actually done cheese steaks with them as well. I just like to top those off for the brininess, for a little crunch. Just for a little something, something, you know. I don't know if this is what you imagined when you told me this is what you wanted, but this is what I this thought of. This is exactly... <laughs> I'm telling you one thing, today's Monday. Diet starts tomorrow. <laughs> I've known you for 30 years, it seems like, and your diet always starts the next day. <laughs> if you guys have to wait as long as I do to eat this, then welcome to the, the club. But for her to get her pictures, to make that thumbnail. I know, the cheese hardened up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. <laughs> mm. Super good. I know the steak was amazing. It slaps. <laughs> I know the steak was super good. I would definitely buy a Denver steak. Yeah, again. so whether you shave the steak first or cook the steak like I did, I was just trying to incorporate just a little bit more flavor, get a char on the outside. Mm. Ultimately, yeah. That steak yeah. is tender. You don't, I mean, there's no sacrifice. Mm. With all the fat in there, you definitely saw that there's plenty of fat in there. You cut against the grain. Mm. Either shave it before and saute it. I think the biggest thing is, especially with a steak like this, if you notice on the griddle, we didn't have it like a high heat. You wasn't like creating that Maillard reaction once it was sliced. Okay, You weren't creating that Maillard reaction. You weren't drying it out. Just kind of like warming it back up and keeping that steak as moist as possible, I think, will help you. Other than that, that is amazing. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. That's fantastic. That is amazing. I don't know what would go, I and mean, I don't know how it couldn't. Be, I like this better than a cheesesteak sandwich. As I'm talking with my mouth full. Mm. You can do don't a cheesesteak baked potato. Just the cheesesteak mixture itself. Yeah. Is just perfect. Yeah. You can just make this if you're low carb. Mm-hmm. Golly, and yeah. that's even after it's been sitting out for 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know, dude. We need to go warm it up. All right, guys. There you go. We have cold potatoes and cold cheese. We're about to fix that. It's you guys, super good. Huh? It's, it's, it's super good. All right, guys. If you're interested, hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Also, don't forget to check us on Instagram where we share your stories. You guys post a lot of things. We're able to reshare it. It's pretty fun. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. This Golly. thing's going back in the oven for a quick second. This is amazing. I'm going to have to run. 10 miles today. <laughs> you think there'll be any left? No. Heck, even if you don't eat the fries, just the cheesesteak mixture. Mm -hmm. Golly, that's a winner.